Hi everyone, Mike here from Mikey Reviews. In this video, I'm going to be taking a look at the Nikon Coolpix P1000. Now, the P1000 is definitely in the premium range of Nikon's bridge camera models. Uh, it retails in at around £1,000, so it certainly isn't cheap. However, it is also not the most expensive uh, bridge camera on the market. I believe Sony's RX10 Mark IV goes between 1700 to 1800 uh, So that's a bit of a different ballpark. Um, a more equivalent version would be the RX10 Mark II. Now, the, the difference between the two is that the RX10 Mark II has a one inch sensor, which is much bigger than this one, and it has a nice wide aperture throughout the, the focal range. So I think 24 to 240, it, you can get 2.8, which is, that is absolutely incredible. However, the focal range of this blows it out of the water so if you're looking for that more you know um, uh, range and zoom then this is definitely the one to go for as it has an equivalent of 3000 mil now even with my full frame camera I've got a, um, a 70 to 300 if I were to zoom on the moon at 300 mil and to crop I still wouldn't be able to get the detail that this would be able to get despite this having a smaller sensor because of the optics uh, are much better you know we're not talking about digital zoom we're talking about actual optical zoom so having that that focal range is absolutely insane and that's what I'm really excited for this camera now as for specs I mean there's um, not really too much that it's explaining on the box and to be honest even on the product page it doesn't really say a lot um, it's a 125 times optical zoom so that's a focal range of 24 to 3000 uh, the aperture starts from uh, 2.8 and it goes uh, well it stops down to f8 i believe at the the the, the, um, the furthest focal range it does have raw support as it says right here and it, uh, it can shoot in 4k uhd and it has um, an electronic viewfinder which is OLED led so there's some pretty good features and you can see here as well it has a screen that pops out and can twist around another good feature which um, you know you don't always get on uh, some of the other models like you know Sony seems to, to lack on that front so anyway uh, let's get unboxing and see exactly what's inside so the first thing are the super interesting instruction manuals which you probably don't need unless you're uh, a beginner then yeah definitely have a have a look through them. If you've owned cameras before, not really something you need to do. Okay, so we've got a nice Nikon strap here. Next thing to come out is an AC adapter. So this will uh, clip onto uh, the other bit that should be coming out at some point. Oh no, we have a battery. Uh, model number ENEL20A. A micro USB cable, so this will be for the charging. Aha, that's it. So that there's also the, uh, the USB. AC adapter, it's basically that, flips out, and it just pops in like that, there we are. Next thing to come out, so we have a nice little box here, which is extremely light, that is the lens hood. So this is a bayonet styled lens hood wow that's very wide i believe the um the ring size is 77 mil in diameter and the camera seems to be very well packed in my god this thing is huge Definitely some weight to it, that's for sure. Wow. Are you ready? Here we are. Look at that. Now, <laughs> I can imagine um, walking around handheld. This is definitely gonna be a, um, a workout for your arms, that's for sure. 
However, man, I absolutely love the grip. Just the initial feel of this is really secure. So you've got a nice wide grip so you can uh, get your fingers nice and deep. Um, same with the, the, the thumb rest here. It actually curves out quite a bit and it has some really nice grip also, which is pretty decent. So on the bottom, so you've got the uh, little tripod receptacle here. And we've got the battery hatch and also that's where the SD slot goes in as well. So you've got the SD there and your battery. Okay, so you've got an arrow here. Look at the arrow on the battery. That's how you're gonna, uh, you're gonna know. And then you just uh, slide it from right to left. And it is a little bit fiddly, but at least it's nice and secure. Oh. Let's get a SD. So the, the metal chips face that way. Yeah, nice and secure, it's good. So let's take a look at the exterior of the camera. Up top we have a hot shoe, so you will be able to mount uh, quite a few accessories onto this camera. Just in front you do have the flash, which can uh, be popped out by this slider here. There we are. So it's got quite a heavy uh, pop up there. And unfortunately, you can't actually adjust the angle of this. It's you know, it pretty much stays straight. Unlike my Sony cameras, I can um, the ones that actually have their inbuilt flash. Um, they're designed in a way that you can actually you, uh, hold your finger down on it and point it up to the ceiling, which means that you can diffuse the uh, the light and have a nice even lighting. Probably, you know, this isn't really the camera for that kind of thing, but it would have been nice to have that just in case. So that's something to uh, bear in mind if that's going to be an issue. So on uh, both these sides here, obviously we've got these uh, uh, little mounts for your strap. We have the uh, OLED EVF and uh, yeah, a little focusing wheel here, which if I get the light, maybe just right here, so you can adjust it to your eyes. Now remaining on top, we have the uh, mode dial here. So we have auto, program auto, shutter priority, aperture priority, manual, we have user mode, we have creative mode, this is manual movie, then we have this one's uh, bird watching mode, and this one I uh, quite like the idea, uh, idea of, it's moon mode, so it will set the, um, it will adjust the settings uh, appropriately for moon photography. We also have scene mode, so it will give you a bunch of other scenes to choose from, which is basically like a, you know, like a selective auto mode and then back to auto. We have the power on and off button here, as well as the control wheel. And we also have the shutter release button, as well as the zoom. Now you do also have a zoom function on the side here as well. So if you're holding it, you can easily, uh, well to be honest, it's quite easy doing that and also that, so uh, it's really down to preference. And we have a snapback um, zoom function button here as well. Okay, so if we go on the rear here, okay, so we've got a monitor button as well as an uh, auto exposure lock and auto focus lock, and you can also flick this between manual focus and auto focus. We have a recording button. Now, I, I do really want to stress just how good these, um, you know, the, the, the layout of these buttons are, and it might not seem uh, obvious, but there's like a little lip to kind of protect the, the buttons. So if your finger or your thumb uh, slips near it, you're not gonna, I mean, I'm pressing down, and I'm not actually pressing the button. Um, so that stops for accidental pressing of the buttons. Um, really nice feature that they've put there. Definitely well thought out. Uh, and just below that we have the playback button as long, uh, along with the display. We have another little control wheel and you can select flash. Um, this is the uh, exposure value, macro, timer, and I'll see the OK button, uh, followed by the menu and delete. Okay, um, on the side here we have a microphone uh, port there. It's always good to have on a camera, especially if you like videoing. We have the HMI and USB ports here. So you've got, I believe that's micro HMI as well as micro USB. And then we also have another one for, you can get a shutter release cable um, that basically slots in there. As for the screen, 
This is not the, the type of screen I'm used to with my cameras, so this is actually quite nice. It flips out, um, so you can do it that way, all the way. So if you're vlogging, that's pretty neat. Um, you can also um, have it, there we are. So you can have it completely um, uh, parallel to the, the camera. But if you do want to have it pointing out, you can also do that as well. That's also to help you, you know, so get a different angle. So if you're shooting down below, you can still see what you're shooting at. That's a really nice feature. Okay, so it doesn't actually say the, um, uh, the diameter size, but uh, to my knowledge it is 77 mil. There we are. We will test this out right now because I have a 77 mil on my, uh, my G Master lens here. One of my favourite lenses. So if this fits, then yeah, 77 mil. That's good to know. So the other thing to mention as well is uh, this does have um, Bluetooth and Wi-Fi features on here as well which is you know you can see on there all right what I want to see though is uh, just how much this extends so if I keep this nice and still good god Okay, so like when it's actually fully extended, there's definitely a little bit of, uh, of uh, you know, it's definitely a little bit front heavy, but it's not actually as much as I thought it was going to be, which is pretty decent. When using the zoom, it will tell you up the top what mil equivalent you're currently at, as well as a white bar that goes all the way up to the top until you hit 3000 mil. Now after that, if, uh, if you zoom in further, the bar will turn blue followed by yellow, and that means that you're in digital zoom. I personally wouldn't recommend uh, digital zoom, however some people may like it. Now you can uh, disable the digital zoom or if you go into RAW it will automatically disable it. Now, as for the menu system, it's very straightforward. So um, at the moment, because we're on uh, auto mode, it's very restrictive to what you're seeing. So you can only access the image quality. So you can go fine, normal, raw, raw, fine and raw, normal. Uh, I like to shoot raw and fine. Uh, the image size is 16 megapixels and the resolution is 4,608 by 3,456. Uh, and in the video settings, you can go up to 4K um, with 25 and 50p, but you can change it to um, uh, to 30 if you wish. So with the main settings, you've got various options like autofocus assist, digital zoom, etc. Um, the snapback zoom, large, medium, or short. Control ring options. I have that set to ISO. Um, you can format your card, etc. Um, just standard settings. Now, if I were to change this to manual mode and basically the, the the options will change depending on what mode you are uh, so in manual you can see that there is a lot more options to choose from from white balance and metering if i change it into the bird watching mode by default it's actually uh, uh 500 mil but you can change it up to 3000 mil so what this allows you to is um if i go out of this if i hold the snapback button it will quickly go out of um, the 500 mil to, uh, well this one's to 80 mil, and there's like a little rectangular box, so you can basically uh, track your subject and then let go, and it will zoom very quickly back in, so you can hit your target. The auto focusing system is a bit of a hit or miss. You may have to have a little play around. But yeah, overall the the menu system is very easy to navigate around. Uh, now I'm going to show you a couple of examples of uh, of the zoom.
So now you've seen the zoom examples, I'm sure you'll agree when I say that the focal range on this thing is amazing. Such good amount of reach, uh, being able to see something so close even though it's so far away is very impressive and we've got to applaud Nikon for getting such an amount of uh, focal range into a bridge camera. It's very impressive. However, just because the zoom is impressive doesn't mean that the overall image quality is great. I mean, as you've seen on the, on the video examples, there was a lot of shaking going on. Now, on both of those footage, um, I used a, a decent tripod with a decent head um, at the, the beach. There was barely any wind, very, very minimal, but yet it was still enough to make it shaky and just not suitable if you're, you know, if you want decent video footage, it's just not going to cut it. For, for generic, like, videography or whatever, just like you just want some fun snaps, then I guess it'll be okay. As for photo quality, uh, yeah, pretty average, really. Um, if you're just after generic photography, holiday photos, viewing them on like a smaller device like a smartphone or tablet you're not really going to notice the lack of quality or you know posting on social media yeah i think it's perfectly um, acceptable for for that kind of scenario but if you're someone who really does like quality then unfortunately this isn't going to deliver the optics although can go quite a a good range isn't overly good and that combined with the little sensor and never mind it stops down on so much light when you're in that focal range never mind using it handhelds it just there's a lot it's very impractical in most scenarios the only thing that it's really good at is doing the moon shots when uh, when it comes to zoom stabilize on a, on a tripod you can get some pretty decent shots um, but for, for situations like being at a, at a zoo where you're going to be moving around um, you know, anything over 500 mil is kind of overkill, especially as you're just going to induce shake handheld. Um, you have other cameras on the market like the Panasonic FZ1000, which has a one inch sensor, much bigger than this, and it covers a focal range equivalent to 25 to 400 with a brighter aperture of 2.8 to f4. So something like that, which is also half the price, may seem a bit more ideal in those situations. So you've really got to weigh up what you want in a bridge camera. Um, if, if you're not too uh, fussed with having, um, you know, kind of like okay image quality, um, but you really want that zoom, then go for this. If you're a bit more, you know, critical of image quality and don't mind to compensate on the, the focal range, then go for, look at one of the other uh, competitors like uh, Panasonic or, or Sony. Sony have the RX10 series, they've got a lot of models, really vary in price. Just check out the specs, see what is more ideal for you. Um, yeah, overall, I'm, I'm not overly impressed with the camera. It's decent, not great, certainly not jaw dropping as they seem to advertise it, um, but yeah, I mean, perfectly acceptable for, I think, most people are gonna, gonna enjoy it. I think that the, 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 the focal range is more of a showboating to, to kind of, you know, show what they can do, but it's not really ideal in many situations. That's my opinion, please don't hate me for it. Uh, anyway guys, thank you very much for watching this video, and I uh, hope to see you in my next one.